There I was, minding my own business on a Tuesday morning, reading the comments on my latest video, 911 RVST by the way, uh, when Porsche sent me an email saying, today at one o'clock, we're presenting the new Carrera T. It gave me all the details, and now the embargo's lifted, I'm gonna share them with you. So, the juggernaut of new models for the 992.2 generation of 911 continues. The GTS and Carrera were only announced in the summer. We've already had the first GT product, and now we're going straight in with the T before we've even got the Carrera S. We're gonna run through uh, the headlines of the new model now. I'm then gonna dive out the way and show you the details around this new car. And then we're gonna offer initial thoughts ahead of our first drive, no doubt later this year, or start of next. So the 992.2 is the third generation of Carrera T and principally it follows that same recipe of its predecessors, base engine, refined sport chassis, some weight saving to create a purist and honest Porsche 911. Headline news then, the new Carrera T is available manual only, no more PDK muddying the waters of the Carrera T and its purity, which is great, and check this out, the gearbox is six speed. The seven speed has been kicked into touch. We're back to glorious six speed. All the best Porsche gearboxes are six speed. And this is the case in the new Carrera T. So it's six speed manual only, there's no PDK. What we do have though, is a cabriolet version of the T. For the first time, you can choose your body style, tin top or open top. Make of that what you will. Rear axle steering is also thrown into the mix as standard specification for the first time, you can't take it away. The new Carrera T saves weight and a decent amount of it over the Carrera, we'll dive into that in a minute. And the manual shifter itself comes with a wooden inlay, absolutely beautiful, harking back to glorious Porsches of old, including the 917 and the Carrera GT. It's lovely to see Porsche bring this back into a modern 911. That's your headline news, but there's so many more stats to dive into. So as I said, I'll get out of the way and we'll take a look around in more detail. Right, we're gonna start with the gearbox because the gearbox is the biggest news on the 992.2 Carrera T. As I've just said, it is six speed. It is not the six speed from the motorsport department, okay? It's the six speed version of the familiar seven speed, which was fitted to uh, non-GT products from the previous generation. Now I've got this information from sources, including the automotive journalist and friend of Nineworks, Kyle Fortune. It's super interesting, okay? So Porsche says, the six-speed manual transmission with dual disc clutch and dual mass flywheel offers a significant weight advantage and not just compared to the PDK. Optimizations resulted in a saving of approximately 1.2 kilos compared to the familiar seven-speed manual transmission on the previous generation. In addition, the mass inertia torque has been significantly reduced and the insulation has been optimized with good tuning of the spring mass damper. So it's quite a rework. The ratio of each gear remains the same as it is on the 911 Carrera. Now what you'll remember is the current Carrera is eight speed, not six, okay? The eight speed PDK. So basically the top gear has been locked off. The shifter itself, by the way, is shortened. So a shorter, stubbier shifter goes into the T with a badge just ahead of it on the transmission tunnel, simply saying MT for manual transmission. Not only is that lever shortened, it's topped with, as I mentioned, an open pour walnut laminated wooden gear knob. There's also a H pattern sticker going in the rear quarter windows to save all your mates pressing their noses against your window when you pull up to Cars and Coffee to check what transmission you've got. Now it mentions there the 1.2 kilos saved over the previous generation seven speed gearbox. Well, that's a good theme to carry forward because this Carrera T has significantly saved weight over its Carrera derivative, 42 kilos lighter than the requisite 992.2 Carrera. And for context in the previous generation, the Carrera T was 35 kilos lighter than its Carrera equivalent. So there's a greater weight saving this time round, which is great to see. Some of the weight saving includes lightweight windows and reduced insulation as per the usual Carrera T recipe. Full fixed back bucket seats though, they are optional, but with that spec, that's where you can get the lightest configuration of the new Carrera T, which weighs in at 1,478 kilos. Sport Chrono package is standard with a Sport Chrono clock on the dash. 
The engine, as we know, is the base Carrera, so that's delivering 394 PS and 450 newton meters of torque. With power, obviously, going to the rear axle only, as per the normal Carrera T recipe. As is Sports Exhaust, which we're promised sounds particularly fruity with the reduced sound insulation. Sport chassis is also standard spec. This reduces the ride height by 10 millimeters. Other big news is that rear axle steering, which, although you would argue robs the T of some purity, it's actually a really popular option. Rear axle steering, what does it do? Again, low speed agility, high speed stability is the best way to look at it. It's been specifically tuned for the Carrera T here. And twinned with what Porsche describes as more direct steering ratio on the front axle, significantly optimizes handling. Likewise with the standard PASM sport suspension, that too is tuned specifically to increase agility of the Carrera T. The Carrera T rides on uh, bigger diameter wheels than the base Carrera, so they're actually Carrera S spec, 20 inch on the front, 21 on the back. Now, although it's the base Carrera engine, that does signify a power increase over the previous generation Carrera T. And with that in mind, Porsche has uh, bulked up the braking system on it. You've got six piston calipers at the front and 350 millimeter discs all the way around. Inside, you've got a heated GT Sport steering wheel, so slightly smaller diameter. Racetex is also available. The seats are the Bogo four-way electrically adjustable jobbies. I personally would upgrade those to buckets if you can. Either way, you've got the 911 logo stitched into the headrests. There's a range of colors available, including Paint Sample and Paint Sample Plus, and further customization is available on the outside and inside with optional design packages. Now, externally, the Carrera T will have some vanadium gray on it. Uh, again, like, as usual with a T, like the wing mirror covers, the side script, etc. Uh, however, there is further optional customization available with design packages. For the exterior, that will give you some gentian blue flare. For example, the inlays in the rear lid uh, and the decals, as well as detailing on the side window sticker and inside the wheels as well, which is pretty cool. 0 to 60 is 4.5 seconds. The Cabriolet is 4.7 seconds. Top speed is 183 mile an hour. The Cabriolet 182. The Carrera T is available now. The Coupe is basically 10 grand more than the Carrera, so that's 111 grand. And then the Cabriolet version of the T is another 10 grand on from that. So there we have it then. That is the Carrera T. Initial thoughts. Well, I think it looks sensational. I love the fact that Porsche has been really quick off the mark in bringing out this uh, focused 992.2 Carrera T. It's actually the first manual 992.2 you can buy away from that GT product, the GT3 that was announced only a couple of weeks ago. So if you want a stick shift in a non-GT product, this is your only option right now. Again, pretty fascinating as well that Porsche has chosen to launch the purest uh, Carrera T before the S. I'm certain an S will be coming. And in fact, in the press release, Porsche sort of hinted at that because it says the Carrera T rides on the Carrera S spec wheels, which as I said, are slightly wider than the entry level Carrera. So that's really exciting. I love the fact PDK has gone. As I said, PDK muddied the waters somewhat in terms of general values of the T. You could have a real pure spec T, which to date has been a manual tin-topped car, passive rear axle, bucket seats. But then you could also spec a Carrera T with a sunroof, PDK, and rear axle steer, which to be honest, is a totally different car. So I love the fact that Porsche has ditched that. This very clearly is a car for the purist that perhaps can't stretch to a GT product, or to be honest, can't get a look in at the dealership. So that's positive. My initial reaction to there being a Cabriolet was negative because again, I thought that took away from the purest angle of the Carrera T, the essence of what the Carrera T is all about. But to be honest, this is a company whose last speedster was basically an open top 911R. So I figure if you want a more focused, more chiseled 911 package, driver focused, albeit open top, why not basically? So it's really good news. That is pretty much it all put together in a couple of hours. I literally got this press release um, hours before the embargo lifted. Thanks to Porsche GB for sending it over. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your uh, viewing and support and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Check out the 9 website. It's freshly rebuilt. It's quicker than ever. You can get merch if you like. Um, and there's also a host of amazing Porsche content, including, as I said earlier, 
a fantastic 911 RV ST head-to-head. -head. It's a world first. That's enough from me. Thanks for your support. We'll see you soon.